Hi everybody, good morning, good morning. Just wanted to come and give you your devotion for today. And uh, you can turn your Bibles to John chapter 3. The Gospel of John chapter 3. And while you're turning there, I just want to make mention to you that if you are uh, want to come to service on Sunday, we have one service every Sunday. 11 a.m. Christian Pentecostal Church, 1020 Tarji, and you have to register. So you go to rsvp.cpc900.org and you fill out the registration form just to let us know. And so we have that information. We are following the CDC uh, guidelines, and so we want you to register. Okay? Now, be reminded that Thursday evening is the cutoff time. So after Thursday, there is no registration, but you can come at the front door, which we are kind of discouraging because we'd rather you register, but um, you can still come and fill out a form in the lobby. But to avoid all that, you can just register online at rsvp.cpc900.org. Okay? as simple as possible. We're doing everything first class in the sense of the CDC guidelines, and so we'll make it as convenient and safe as we know how, and we've been doing a great job at that, okay? So God bless you. The Gospel of John chapter three in the Bible reads, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. So he's speaking on behalf of the conversations that these people are having, the Pharisees, saying, we know, meaning not just him, we know that you are a teacher that's come from God. So they all are in agreement, something's different about this person and that God is with him. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So first thing I want to make mention to you is that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and the reason why Jesus uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night is because Nicodemus did not want to allow the other people to know that he wanted questions answered and that he was going to go and speak with Jesus and be able to get some deeper understanding of the things that are going on through him and with him and so he's got a curiosity going on and he has a, a, a fire burning in him and so he comes to Jesus by night all right to be secret very important all right and then verse 3 Jesus answered and said to him most assuredly I say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God and this um, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? You see, Jesus tells him something that to him becomes very profound, and he, act, he begins to ask questions. And a lot of times in society today, people just kind of want to throw things aside and not be curious, not to research, not to ask the questions that they should be asking. And so he, desiring to know more about eternity, more about God, more about the Messiah, more about what's happening right now before his very eyes, he begins to turn around and ask questions. And so the conversation begins to stir up a curiosity within him. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said this to you. You must be born again. Again, that word, born again. A lot of people turn around and, and say, oh, that born again thing, that it's like a cult and, and all these different things, you know, and, and, and uh, everything that's evangelical, just so you know, is born again when it comes to... Uh, 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 Pentecostal, Baptist, uh, Lutheran, Presbyterian, 
everybody that's under the evangelical banner believes in being born again, born of the Spirit, okay? And so born again is not a complicated phrase. It's in the Bible if we just got a better understanding of what it actually meant instead of trying to throw it out or cast it aside because it's not a phrase that is understood. You know, just because we don't understand something at first doesn't mean we shouldn't be curious and be asking these questions. And I had that happen to me when I was younger and I first got clean. Many people were telling me, oh, that's that born again thing. And then, yeah, but that born again thing, they didn't even know what it was. And so in that, in, under that umbrella is where I came to Christ. Under that umbrella is how I got delivered from drug addiction and the life that I was living. And I came uh, to a relationship with, with God through the Lord Jesus Christ and governed by the Holy Spirit since then. And that's been over 30 years. And so it's been, it's been important. It's important for us to all know that that doesn't mean that we're perfect, but that does mean that there's a discussion, a relationship that's taking place. Nicodemus is having that discussion right now and he's finding out that the first thing has to happen is that you become born again and that you give your life to Christ. All right. And then it goes on to say, let's go to verse 12, uh, verse 11. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak that we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. See, he's John is telling him, we talk about the things we witnessed. We talk about uh, uh, his writing, John, the Gospel of John, he's writing. We talk about the things that we witnessed and all these things, right? And it says, we speak that which we know and testify which we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you did not believe, we will. how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Man, if, I, if I'm going to talk to you about farming and fishing and stuff like that, and you're going to be confused and not understand even the parables that I'm talking about, how am I supposed to explain to you spiritual things that are about eternity? You know, so somewhere along the line, there has to be faith involved, right? And so he goes, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as... And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He's talking about the crucifixion. The Old Testament, Moses, yeah, they lift, he, God instructed Moses to put the serpent on a stick and lift, lift them up, and, and healing would begin to take place. And then he goes on and uses that very same uh, instruction that was given to the children of Israel because they, this Nicodemus understood that. He understood the Old Testament. So he told them, a very uh, uh, a profound scripture that he would understand. So he gives him that, and then he goes, but even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So now he's probably like, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you trying to say to me here? One minute we're talking about born again. I'm questioning you about going back into my mother's womb. Now you're talking about the, the lifting up the serpent, and which means Moses in the, in the healing moment that took place with the people. And you're saying the Son of Man, which is you, is going to be lifted up? What do you mean lifted up? And so he's, he's very curious right now, all right? That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So now he's talking about eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So Nicodemus is like overwhelmed right now. I, I can guarantee you he is his mind is being blown because in his mind we're talking about eternity. And the only way to get there is through the Son of Man. And you're saying he will be lifted up. And you're talking about you got to be born again to understand this because the born of the Spirit is spirit and of the flesh is flesh. And so he's trying to process all this stuff that is being given to him by Christ himself, by Jesus himself. Verse 18, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already 
because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and the men love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. <laughs> That's a packed, action-packed scripture right there. You know, it's important that we understand that to believe does not mean just acknowledge. Just acknowledge that there is a God. Believe does not just mean that. You know, the Bible turns around in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and it says, If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. People love to use that portion of scripture, but it doesn't end there. So that's just the step that's taken to lead a person to confession. But on the other side of the scripture, as it continues, it says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Okay? Meaning that there's a conversion that takes place. And, and Nicodemus, he's having that right now. He's literally having a born-again experience within his heart and within his mind. He's literally uh, uh, processing everything that's being said. And something is awakening within him. Something is awakening. We believe that to be the, the Spirit of God that's awakening. That he is being awakened within his spirit. So can you be religious and not be awakened? Absolutely. Nicodemus was. Nicodemus knew the word, knew the law, knew the, knew the Old Testament back and front. And when Jesus quoted those scriptures to him from the Old Testament and then literally brought him into a new covenant understanding, it literally, the word that he already knew, which was law, became life. It was like shining a light on it. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, confession leads to repentance. Repentance means turning around and going the other way. On this day that Nicodemus had this discussion, he was born again. His whole life was turned around. Now he was a Pharisee, but he was a Christian just like everybody else. And for those of you that are not sure if that's true, go check out who got Jesus' body off the cross. Joseph from Arimathea and Nicodemus. These were two Christians that were 100% of the law, but their lives had been turned around because of Christ. I want to encourage you to continue to read this portion of Scripture. And don't just use John 3.16. Read the whole story. Because this portion of Scripture right here was a religious man that was curious about Jesus. People that know about religion or know about, you know, a, a, a religion that maybe they don't even practice or maybe they don't really walk in it. Jesus spoke to this man and life was born within him. Today, the question is, is born again biblical or is it what other people say? I say to you today that born again, the phrase born again, the statement born again, and the reality of being born again is 100% biblical. And it started right there with Nicodemus. Are you curious today? You should be. But should you should be curious because eternity depends on it. And I want to encourage you. What God has blessed me with, you can have too. Read the Gospel of John, chapter 3, from 1 down, and just check out this discussion that takes place between Jesus Christ and this gentleman, Nicodemus. God bless you. Have a great day. I hope that today is a beautiful day for you and that the Word of God really burns in your heart and keeps coming back to remembrance within your spirit. Bye-bye.